Okay. So good evening. Um so everyone please open your Bibles. So Galatians again. Uh so chapter 4 and let's all read together from verses 21 to 31. Tell me, you who desire to be under the law, do you not listen to the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by a slave woman and one by a free woman. But the son of the slave was born according to the flesh, while the son of the free woman was born through promise. Now this may be interpreted allegorically. These women are two covenants. One is from Mount Sinai, bearing children for slavery. She is Hagar. Now Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. She corresponds to the present Jerusalem, where she is in slavery with her children. But the Jer Jerusalem above is free, and she is our mother. For it is written, Rejoice, O barren one who does not bear. Break forth and cry aloud, you who do not, you who, who are not in labor. For the children of the desolate one will be more than those of the one who has a husband. Now you, brothers, like Isaac, are children of promise. But just as at the time he who was born according to the flesh persecuted him who was born according to the spirit, so also it is now. But what does the scripture say? Cast out the slave woman and her son. For the son of the slave woman shall not inherit with the son of the free woman. So brothers, we are not children of the slave, but of the free woman. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Okay. So tonight, as we finish up itong chapter 4, with this very, very, very deep, pero still very interesting na passage, Gusto ko lang din ipaalam sa inyo na this section will also mark the end of Paul's theological argument dito sa Galatians. No? Finally, di ba? Kasi sa chapter 5 and 6, ang makikita na natin doon is yung application side of things naman. No? Meaning yung practical side naman ng faith natin. In other words, kung paano ba talaga tayo dapat mabuhay bilang isang kristyano. Which is of course so important. Di ba? Especially in light of what Paul is has been teaching us dito sa unang apat na chapter na to. Na tayo as Christians are standing before God or our justification before God is actually based solely on the finished work of Christ. At hindi sa mga kailangan na panating gawin o idagdag pa. In other words, hindi sa mabuting pam pamumuhay. No? Kasi nga as Christians, we are no longer under the law but under grace. Tama? Which, sa totoo lang, kapag inisip mo, the, the concept or the doctrine of which is, is so simple na kahit ang batang maliit, maintindihan. Di ba? Pero despite that, parang ang hirap pa din tanggapin nito ng, ng marami. Bakit? Well, because we, like the Galatian people, have been seduced by these false teachers who keeps telling us na, okay, gusto mo si Jesus? Good. So prove it. Kaya ito, ito yung mga listahan ng mga kailangan mong gawin para magustuhan ka rin niya. So you must obey these rules, these customs, you must be circumcised, you must be baptized, you must do all these things to be right with God. Kasi otherwise, well, Paano natin malalaman if you're really worthy enough to be adopted into his family? Di ba? And somehow, somehow, this appeals to us. No? Maski walang sense na mas pipiliin mo yung, yung kailangan mong pagtrabuhan kaysa sa libre. Pero for some reason, most of, our, most of us are still still clinging on to that. No? Mas gusto pa din natin yung... yung uh, yung this this measurable performance based relationship kaya doon pa din tayo umaasa and why is that well isipin niyo maybe it's because we see performance in so many other avenues of our lives diba sa trabaho papasok ka lang you do your job your and you expect to get paid for it 
kahit sa bahay no, nung bata ka pa you do chores and, and your parents reward you for a job well done now hindi ko sinasabing mali yan okay all I'm saying is that because this is how life works sa mundo natin it's almost unavoidable na this is the kind of thinking or, or mentality that will come out of that tama yung I do this therefore I deserve that And unfortunately, for so many people today, this is how they view God. No? Now he's this big boss in the sky who, who we never quite measured up to. So we got to do better or work harder. Otherwise, baka mainis siya sa atin at itapon tayo sa hell. And this is the exact reason why Paul calls this slavery. No? Kasi you're enslaved to these things that you must do in order to be right with with whatever God that you're looking up to. Now, ito pang masakit. Kasi even within the Christian church, even with people like these Galatians who supposedly should know better, the temptation always is to default back to this. To begin to believe again that our standing before God is somehow based upon how well we are doing today. Actually, this is despite having the, the Apostle Paul himself and the rest of the New Testament telling us over and over and over again na nakalokohan to. Na this is not how grace works. Pero despite that, you'd be shocked kung gaano pa din kadaming tao sa simbahan noon at ngayon na nakatali sa ganitong sistema. No? Kaya in this epistle alone, Paul send, spends four whole chapters passionately preaching to us and telling us na okay, let's settle this once and for all. Kasi you cannot have it both ways. Kailangan mo talagang mamili. Do you trust in your works? Do you trust in your ability to work your way up to God? Or do you trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ alone for your salvation? At isa lang ang pwede mong pagtayuan dyan, no? You cannot have it both ways. Hindi mo siya pwedeng i-combine. Bakit? Kasi if you begin to add even a little works dito, sabi ni Paul sa chapter 2, then grace is altogether nullified. Then grace is no longer grace. Kaya today, after four chapters, after 13 sessions na itong Galatians study natin, talking and, 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 and studying about this exact thing over and over again, If you are still placing your trust and your faith in something else other than Jesus alone, well, ito lang masasabi ko sa'yo. Be careful what you wish for. Kasi the consequences of that is severe. And that's what Paul is saying to the Galatians dito sa verse 21, no? Tingnan nyo. Sabi na, tell me, you who desire to be under the law, Do you not listen to the law? Basically, okay. Gusto nyo pa din paniwalaan yung tinuturo nila? You want to be under the law? You want to follow the old, what everything the Old Testament says? Sige lang. Pero sana pakinggan nyo muna ako, sabi ni Paul. Let me just tell you what the Old Testament really says about this. Para alam nyo lang kung, kung ano yung pinapasukan nyo. Pwede ba? And so Paul goes on to this Old Testament story about Sega, Sarah and, and Hagar, no? Where he shows us that salvation is never ever even been about the obedience to the law. But always, always by grace through faith in the promises of God. Ngayon, bakit pala siya napunta dito? Bakit niya gagamitin yung storya ni, ni Sarah at ni Hagar o these, these two people as a, as a history ng mga Hudyo as an illustration kung mga Gentiles naman ng, kamang, mga, ng mga kausap niya? ba? Diba? Kasi yun nga, unlike the Jews, hindi naman to part ng heritage nila. So anong alam nila dyan? Tama? Tapos eto pa, makikita mo mamaya na hindi nga niya masyadong kunento in detail to no meaning ang assumption talaga na is is familiar na sila sa storyang to bakit well 
perhaps this is the exact same story that these Judaizers are using to convince them, no? To demonstrate to these Galatians how important it is that they themselves became Jews first. Sabi nila, you want to be part of that promise? You want to be part of God's people? Then wala kang choice. You have to be Jewish first. Kasi tingnan nyo, kami mga Hudyo, kami ang mga totoong anak tulad ni Isaac. Kami ang mga promised people ni God at wala nang iba. And so Paul here is going to flip the entire script on them. No? Sabi na, yan ba ang sinabi nila sa inyo tungkol dito? Okay, let me tell you what this really means. And so he begins to tell this story that, that hopefully many of you still remember. No? Kasi na-cover na natin to dati sa Genesis. Sabi niya, for it is written, Abraham had two sons. And by the way pala, gusto ko lang isingit to. This is actually the perfect way to begin any sermon. No? For it is written. Kasi he's letting us know that we're going back to the word of God. At hindi to something na, na inimbento ko lang. Kasi delikado yun. And so he said, Okay, Abraham had two sons. Kasi nga, ang, ang claim nitong Judaizers is that they were the children of Abraham, di ba? And Paul here is saying, yes, tama naman sila. Pero which son specifically? Kasi tandaan nyo, dalawa sila. One by a slave woman and one by a free woman. This, but the son of the slave woman was born according to the flesh and the son of the free woman was born through promise. Okay, hinto muna tayo dito. Kasi what Paul is doing here is he's, he is laying out for us first the facts of history. Okay? Kasi, well, because this is a true story. No? Hindi ito parang si Malakas at si Maganda na nagawagawa lang ng mga tao to make a point. No. This is actual historical events in the history of the Jewish nation. And for those who are not familiar or don't remember this story well, I think at this point, medyo kailangan muna nating isummarize to ng konti para sa lahat. Agree? Okay. So ganito yon. You see, etong si Abraham kasi sa Old Testament, he was this guy that God specifically chose from a, a very far away country to come into this new and strange place called Canaan. At dito, sabi ni God sa kanya na I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. And I will give all of this land to your descendants. Which by itself is so wonderful. Di ba? Pero ang problema lang doon is walang anak tong si Abraham. Kasi it seems na, na, na his, his wife is barren. And so the, the closest thing they have to an heir is a, a servant. No? So paano sila magkakaroon ng, ng descendant eh ni isang anak wala sila. Tama? Pero maski na ganun, since God promised and has insisted that they will one day have a son, a true heir to all of these promises, well, naniwala na lang sila. And so they waited and waited. For how long, you ask? Well, actually, halos 30 years silang naghihintay. So, di mo talaga pwedeng sabihin na hindi sila pasensyado. No? At parang, parang nakakaawa din isipin kasi here we have this couple na, na senior citizen na pero they're just there. They're just waiting and hanging on to this, this one promise na parang imposible nang dumating. Tapos isang araw, well, kasi waiting eventually depletes you. Di ba? To be honest, yan yung pinakamahirap din para sa akin in my own walk with the Lord. No, It's when He's telling me to wait. And I don't like that. Ang hirap kaya. Kasi nga waiting depletes you. It depletes our expectation. It depletes our, our hope. It depletes our joy even. Yeah, we take so much comfort in verses like Isaiah 40.31, no? which says na, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They will renew their strength. They will renew their joy. They will renew their hope. They shall run 
and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I mean, there are times in our lives na kailangan na kailangan natin ma-remind neto, di ba? Kasi nga waiting depletes you. And that's exactly what happened to Abraham and Sarah, no? Eventually, they were depleted in their ability to continue waiting. Kasi isang araw, Sarah looks at her 75-year-old body and her husband's 85-year-old body and says, uh, Honey buns? <laughs> Mukha bang kakayanin pa natin to? Kasi, pasensya na ha? Pero I'm beginning to think that it's not going to happen. Hindi kaya mali lang yung pagkaintindi natin to sa promise ng Panginoon. And, and so she came up with this idea that God's promise needed a little help. No? Na siguro kailangan din na ng tulong natin para ma-fulfill niya yung mga sinasabi niya. And so she suggested that Abraham take her maid and build the lineage through her. Kasi inisip niya, no choice na to. Habang kaya pa nitong asawa ko, eh, eh malulusaw na kaya yung katawan niya. Ngayon, bago ka mag-react, bago ka mag this, was, this was actually common practice during that time. Okay? Pero regardless kung kadiri ba o hindi, Kahit paano mo pa ikot-ikotin, this was not the will of God. Tama? Pero out of maybe maybe desperation, Abraham did it anyway. And so he slept with this, this maid, this slave girl named Hagar. And then nine months later, ayun na, may anak na sila. A child by the name of Ishmael. Ngayon, during this time, God didn't really say anything about this. No, he, he kind of just lets it go. Pero around 15 years later, nung mga 100 years old ni si Abraham at 90 na si Sarah, God came to him again and reiterated that he was still going to give them a son through Sarah. Itong asawa na, na yun na nga, 90 years old na ngayon. At alam niyo ano ang reaction ni Abraham? It says here sa Genesis 17:17 17, 17, na he fell on his face and laughed. Wala na nga siyang ngipin pero natawa pa rin siya. But it was not a laughter of doubt, no? It's not like Lord, ah, yang ka na naman. No, Abraham laughed in amazement. At minsan iniisip ko rin, maybe nga may, maybe Abraham is also laughing at his own stupidity. Diba? To think that God somehow needed His help to bring about His own promise? That's basically unbelief on His part, tama? Kasi, get this, God is always, always able to bring about His own promises with or without your help. Amen? Amen? Now, pagkatapos nito, sumagot si Abraham. Sabi niya, oh, that Ishmael said to, to uh, might, might live before you. God said, no, but Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son. And you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his offspring after him. So malinaw na malinaw dito that the promised child is not Ishmael, it's Isaac. It's not through the slave woman, but through the free woman. It's not through the one who is born according to the flesh, meaning according to normal human means, but only through the one who is born of the promise. Born of grace. Bakit? Kasi apart from the God, the work of God, there was no other way to have this child. Diba? I mean, 90, 100. Ano pa magagawa nun? Hindi makatayo, di na nga mag, makatayo mag-isa yan. So, so it is a supernatural birth, no? As opposed to a natural child who is born solely or, or, on the or effort and, and, and work of man. Ngayon, umpisa na ba na, na ninyong nakikita kung bakit ginagamit ni Paul tong storya na to? And I hope you do, no? Kasi what he's doing here is re he's really painting a, a picture for us. Gusto niya kasi na, na makita natin there's really a difference dito between 
freedom and, and slavery between the works of the flesh and grace. And the difference be between these two things is, is so vast. No? As in total opposite talaga sila. Pero wala pa tayo dun. We, we'll come to that later. Kasi just, just, just look at this. Just basing on, on, on what we have seen and talked about so far dito sa verse 22 and 23. There would be no conflict at all. Diba? Actually nga, pakita mo lang to sa kahit sinong hudyo ngayon. Sasabihin nila sa'yo, yes. Amen. This is exactly what we've been telling you. That we are the children of Isaac. That we are the children of promise. Pero kung gusto niyong masave, if you want to be part of God's family, then wala ka talaga ang choice. Kailangan mo talagang maging hudyo tulad sa amin. Pero it's here in the next verse. So verse 24 where Paul completely flips everything on his head. No? Sabi na, no. Nagkakamali kayo. This is really not what this means. Kasi pakinggan niyo ako, ha? Now, this may be interpreted allegorically. These women are two covenants. One is from Mount Sinai, bearing, the children, uh, bearing children for slavery. She is Hagar. Now, Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. She corresponds to the present Jerusalem for he, she is in slavery with her children. Now, anong pinagsasabi niya dito? Kasi parang lalong gumulo, di ba? Well, first of all, bago natin himayin to, I just want to point out itong first part. no? Kasi sabi niya dito na this may be interpreted allegorically. Ngayon, itong, itong, uh, excuse me. Ngayon, itong, itong word na to, ah, uh, teka lang. Ngayon, itong, itong word na to, uh, kung naalala niyo sa, sa English class niyo, it means to give a, a deeper meaning into a story. Di ba? It's when you take something na, 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 na uh, a story or anything at sasabihin mo that this is uh, actually a representation of something else. Kasi the meaning of the text daw uh, is, is not what you see on the surface. So, so meron pang mas, mali, mas malalim na, na hidden meaning dyan. Kumbaga may, may secret ba? And guys, side comment lang. This is actually a horrible, horrible way for any preacher to preach. No? I mean, it's just not the right way. You don't just take the Bible and say, okay, meron kasing mga secret codes dito na, na kailangan pa natin i-unlock at makikit para makita mo yung 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 buong mensahe. Friends, that's that's dangerous. Actually, pag meron kayong kailangan ganun mag-preach, just just stay away. Just just run. Bakit? Kasi kung ganun lang, then you can literally make the Bible say anything you want it to say. Tama? Kaya nga talamak ang mga mga false teachers ngayon, kahit dito sa Pilipinas. I know, I, I've heard this story about this pastor sa US. Um, um, nung nag-preach daw siya about David and Goliath, sabi niya yung, yung, mga, yung limang malilit na bato na ginamit ni David nung humarap siya kay Goliath, they each represent different aspect of our lives daw. Sabi niya merong hope, merong peace, merong faith at kung ano-ano. I mean, anong klaseng kalokohan yun, di ba? Guys, you cannot just read your own beliefs into the text. Okay? You just don't. Kaya tayo nagkakaroon ng mga kulto. Now, tanong. Ganun ba ginawa ni Paul dito? Did he take his own beliefs and read them into Genesis? Sinabi ba niya na itong mga taon to, si Abraham, si Sarah, si Hagar, that they are all just symbols of something else? No. Okay? Kasi unang-una, he is speaking under the divine inspiration of the Holy Spirit. 
which none of us can ever, ever claim. Pangalawa, Paul here is not saying that these Old Testament accounts are allegories. No? Pero rather, he, he is con, uh, construction, uh, con, constructing an allegory or an illustration, if you will, out of them. At madalas natin ginagawa yun kahit dito, di ba? Sometimes for emphasis, we end our messages with a story or an illustration, which is so, so different from reading your own beliefs into the Bible. No? So if you ever hear anyone teaching or preaching allegorically in that way, it's best just to leave. Okay? Kasi I'm sorry, pero, pero delikado talaga yan. Basta ito yung, ito yung tandaan ninyo. Okay? God spoke in order to be understood. Tama? Hindi para guluhin tayo. Kaya nga spoke to us in the same way that we speak to each other using human language that we can easily understand. So the goal of studying and interpreting the Bible is always kung, kung, ano, kung ano ba talaga ang intent ng original author nung sinulat niya to. No? Hindi kung ano ba ang ibig sabihin nito para sa akin. Okay? Kasi to be honest, who cares what you think? Kung di naman yan ang gustong, gustong sabihin sa'yo ng Panginoon. Di ba? Kung di yun talaga yung gusto niyang sabihin. Kaya don't go looking for, for hidden secret meanings in the Bible. No? Kasi there are no hidden secret meanings. You, you just take your Bible and, and you read it and you take everything on the surface level. Unless, syempre, obvious na obvious na figure of speech siya. Tulad nung sinabi ni Jesus na I am the vine or I am the door or this is my body broken for you. I, common sense lang yun, di ba? Wala naman mag-iisip na literal na, na vine si Jesus o, o pinto o ano yung sinasabi ko? So, so it's it's basically the same as how we talk to each other no tulad ng kung sinabi ko sa inyo knock knock or once upon a time i, I mean alam mo na kaagad kung ano yung kasunod niyon you just don't think in a literal sense alam mo yun so don't go looking for deep hidden messages in your bibles okay you read your bible and you treat it as if god is literally speaking to you Kasi, well, he is. No? Anyway, lumalayo na tayo. Balik tayo. Verse 24. Kasi here, Paul is telling us that these two women, si Sarah and si Hagar, they represent two covenants or two different ways to approach God or to be justified by God. Yung una is the way of the promise, of grace. Tapos yung isa naman is the way of the flesh or the way of human means and effort. In other words, the covenant of the law, which these Judaizers and so many other false teachers are teaching and clinging on to. No? Ngayon tanong, saan pala galing tong law na to na pinag-uusapan natin dito? Well, we see that sa Exodus, di ba? When God gave Moses this set of rules to give his people sa Mount Sinai. Now Paul is telling us here that this covenant, this, this commandments give, gave birth to slavery. Bakit? Well, kasi ano ba sinasabi doon? It's basically just a bunch of thou shalt. Tama? Thou shalt do this. Thou shalt do that. And it's all about the things that we must do in order to reach God. So it's like this, this perpetual treadmill to prove ourselves and to earn our way in. No? At ang mahirap pa dyan, is di, hindi ka pwede magkamali or huminto. Meaning you have to obey every single ounce of it to even begin to have a right relationship with him. And so what is Paul saying here? That the law was never meant to save the Israelites. 
Actually, it was never even meant for them to keep. Alam niyo ba yun? O, eh, eh, so para saan? Well, it's actually the opposite. It's really for them to break. Huh? Yes. So that they can know, so that we can know that we are all sinners in desperate need for a Savior. That's why Paul keeps saying that the law is pointing us to Jesus. Because the fact remains that you and I, we could never fully obey the law. We could never fully satisfy the Ten Commandments. Only Christ can. Saka kung ganun pala yung worldview mo, kung, kung, kung ang sistema mo ay kaya ko yan, okay ako kay God, malakas ako kay God, masaya si God sa akin kasi I'm obeying every single one of His commandments. Sasabihin ko na sa inyo ngayon, kung ganun ka, you will become the most discouraged, frustrated, angry, self-righteous person in existence. Kasi you'll be a Pharisee. Tulad ni Paul noon, before he came to the Lord. Naulinaw ko lang. Hindi ko sinasabi na as Christians, we don't need to obey the law anymore. Okay? We need to obey God's commandments. At hindi negotiable yun. Pero it's not our source of righteousness anymore. No? We obey because we want to be more and more like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We obey because when we say we believe Him, it also means that we also believe everything that He says. Na itong mga to, itong mga nakasulat dito, these are the best way for us to live. We obey because we are no longer slaves, but sons and daughters who want nothing more than to please our Heavenly Father who by His grace has adopted us into His family. So the difference really is the motivation. Diba? And it makes all the difference in the world, dama. Kaya today, if you still don't understand this, Kung naniniwala ka pa din that your obedience to the law will somehow save you, Paul says you're not a son, but a child of slavery. You're a child of Hagar. At ito yung parang sampal sa mukha ng mga, sa mga kalaban ni Paul. No? Because he is saying na, o nga, tama ka. You're a child. Pero you're not Isaac. You're actually Ishmael. Kasi tingnan na din, now Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. Ngayon, bakit pa pinabanggit ni Paul to dito? Because beyond the fact that this is the place where the law was given to Moses, it's in Arabia. It's at the place where these people whom, whom the Jews consider to be the gentle of Gentiles, dahil ibang-iba sila sa kanila in terms of their beliefs, live. Kasi even today, di ba? If you take a Jew and a Muslim, I mean, asot po sa ayan. And Paul here is bunching them together, no? Which would probably drive these Judaizers even more crazy. So sinasabi na pare-pareho lang kayo. Present day Jerusalem, Arabia, Jews, Muslims, you're all slaves to religion. You're all bound to all these rules and observances. And, and because you're enslaved to these things, hindi na kayo makakaalis dyan unless someone sets you free. Which would be shocking for any Jew to hear. Diba? Pero it's true. No? Kasi kahit sa ang religion ka pa sumama. As long as you have this set of laws that you have to follow in order to be justified before God, you will never be a son. You always, always be a slave. Okay, it is so important for us to understand and to, to, to not allow legalism to creep into our hearts and our minds. No? To begin to think that somehow, because of what I do or don't do, this affects our righteous standing before God. Guys, that's slavery. 
Kaya itong mga taong to, those who are so immersed into their religion, kahit anong religion pa yan, actually, makikita mo, they're self-righteous. They're prideful. And most of all, they are insecure. Kasi at the back of their minds, hindi nila ma-reconcile if they have already done enough to be right with God. And that's the mark of a person who is still holding on to his law or to his religion, no? Kung sinasabi pa din nila na, nako, hindi ko alam kung enough na ba itong nagagawa ko. O ito pa, those that, that ask na, paano kaya yan kung bigla akong namatay and I still have this, this unconfessed sin? Tatanggapan pa din ba niya ako? Ano niyo? Guys, that's slavery to the law. Freedom and grace can only be found to Christ and Christ alone. Amen? Kasi in Him, our salvation is no longer based upon what we must do, but only based upon what He has already done. Kaya we are no longer slaves. We are now sons and daughters, heirs to the kingdom. Look at verse 26. But the Jerusalem above is free and she is our mother. So Paul here is connecting us, connecting those who are in Christ, not to present day Jerusalem, which is the center of Judaism, but to the new Jerusalem. The Jerusalem that we see is a revelation that is coming out of heaven. It's the kingdom of God. At sabi na dito, it's free. Kasi Paul is also recognizing that Jesus has already paid the price so we don't have to pay for it ourselves anymore. At pansin niyo, it's the same theme over and over and over again dito sa Galatians, no? That as a Christian, that as a child, you are no longer a slave to the law, but you are now free in Christ. Again, does this mean that we are free to live in whatever kind of sin that we want? No. But it's freedom to obey God. To obey the Father who adopted us out of love. Not because we so we obey, not because we 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 have to, but because we get to. Okay? Because you're no longer a child of Hagar anymore, but a child of Sarah, a child born again through the promise. Born again through the new covenant. And she is our mother. Meaning she is our very source of life and freedom. Now, verse 27. For it is written. And by the way, direct quote ito from Isaiah 54.1. No? Sabi doon, for it is written, Rejoice, O barren one who does not hear. Break forth and cry aloud, you who do not, who are not in labor, for the children of the desolate one will be more than those of the one who has a husband. Ngayon, bakit isiningit ni Paul itong passage na to dito? You see, sa original context at meaning, kasi netong passage na to sa, sa Isaiah, he was talking about the nation of Israel as they were being uh, captured, as they were in Babylonian captivity. No? At sabi dito, they were crying out loud. At syempre, di ba? It was really a dark time in the history of Israel. Ang daming nawala sa kanila noon. The city itself was destroyed. The temple was destroyed. As in, halos wala nang natira sa kanila. And the prophet Isaiah here gives a prophecy about God, from, from God about this situation. No? Sabi niya, tingnan niyo. You people, Israel, you may, may be broken now like, like a barren woman. You may feel abandoned. Para kang namatayan. Actually, you may feel like there's no hope at all. Pero one day, one day, God will restore His people. And there will be more children of promise than you could possibly ever imagine. Now, Ano naman connection nito sa Galatians? Well, kasi Paul here is using this Old Testament prophecy and he's using it in a New, con new Testament context. No? Sabi na, this barren woman who is Israel 
it's it's really this their their system of laws that they have that's barren no kasi it's broken this this old system this old covenant you can cry all you want pero it can never ever save you sabi niya but god through his grace and through jesus christ in a way that no man could ever think of has created a way he made and fulfilled this promise on the cross that has now brought about more children that you could ever imagine bakit more than you could ever imagine well kasi nasama na, na ngayon sa usapan ng mga gentiles tayo kasi if you look at the world today how many more christians are there compared to the jews di ba di mo na di mo na mabilang which is so amazing para sa akin no kasi whether you look at this at 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 uh, old testament perspective or a new ter testament context either way this was fulfilled at ito yung sinasabi ng ni Paul sa mga Galatians dito. Sabi na, look, the moment you believe in Christ Jesus, the moment you have been saved by grace through faith like I have, you have become a child of God. You became a brother. Because we, like Isaac, are the real children of promise. At dito niya kinolek-konek lahat, no? Sabi niya, make no mistake. It's only those who believe in Jesus Christ alone who are the children of promise. Kasi yan naman yung story ni Isaac, di ba? He was the child who was born not by human effort, but only by God fulfilling His promise. By, by, by this supernatural power and miracle of God's amazing grace that represents Christianity. That, that represents the, the, the new covenant. That represents putting our, our trust in Christ alone to save us. Friends, salvation is a miracle brought about only by God's grace. Yun lang. So kahit ano pang gawin mo, kahit ano pang pinag, kahit ano pang pinaghirapan yan, you cannot earn it. It's as simple as that. Tingnan nyo to. Screenshot nyo siya kung gusto nyo. Kasi these are the two covenants that we have talked about uh, from the even from the very beginning, no? You see one represents Isaac and the other is Ishmael. And the biggest question you could ever ask yourself in life is this. Alin dito sa dalawang to? Which of this are you really really trusting in? Are you still trusting in your own works or are you trusting in Christ's work? Are you trusting in your obedience? Are you trusting or are you trusting in Jesus' obedience? You see, this is not just the central theme of this book of Galatians, no, but it's the central theme of the entire gospel of Jesus Christ. That you must abandon your faith and trust in your own efforts and place it all on the finished work of Christ on the cross. Pero hindi siya madali. Tama? Sabi ko nga kanina, we are not naturally wired that way. We are wired to, to think like legalists. Na kailangan kong gawin to at kailangan kong gawin yan. And Satan knows that. And he's working over time to, to bound us to that. Kaya he's cost, constantly whispering into our ears na this is not enough. You are not enough. You've not, you've never done enough. God cannot fulfill his promise all by himself. Jesus cannot save you all by himself. And that's exactly why we have Ishmael. Diba? Born according to the flesh. Born out of slavery to Satan's lies. And look what happens when we left when we let Ishmael in sa buhay. Verse 29. But just as at the time who he who was born, uh, he who was born according to the flesh persecuted him who was born according to the spirit, so also it is now. Okay. So ano yung sinasabi ni Paul dito? Again, he's referring back to the to our story, no? Si si Sarah si Hagar. Kasi kung natandaan niyo pa, when Isaac was born, Abraham at first 
try to make it work. Di ba? Ang gusto niyang mangyari is to have these two women who he each have, uh, have a son with to coexist peacefully in the same house. Which is sobrang wishful thinking. Tama? Some would, some would even say that it's stupid to even think that it's possible. Kasi, di ba? Try mo kayang gawin ngayon yan. Ipagsama mo yung dalawang babae mo sa isang bahay. Tingnan mo kung di mag World War III. Pero si Abraham, sa tigas ng mukha nito, try to make it work. And it did, work, it did work for a while. No? Until Isaac was about three years old. And they had a winning party for him. It's a customary celebration para sa kanila nung time na yun. No? And it was at this this party that the son who was born of the slave uh this si, si Ishmael started creating problems by 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 mocking the son of promise si Isaac binuli niya at siyempre nagkagulo di ba until si mama bear si Sarah she finally puts her foot down and says to Abraham uh, mm, Abraham alam ko cute ka pero paalisin mo na sila hindi na talaga sila pwede dito at ito pa yung kicker dyan. Sinang ayunan ni God. God says, Abraham, listen to your wife. Which, gusto ko lang i-remind sa lahat ng babae dito that this is not a proof text to say na lagi kang tama. Okay? Gusto ko lang ilinaw yan. Pero in this particular case, God says, listen to Sarah. At huwag kang mag-alala sa kanila ako na ang bahala sa kanila, but you have to let them go. Bakit? Kasi in the life of any true believer in Christ, the flesh can never coexist with the spirit. Agree? They will always be in conflict with one another. Which Paul will later on this drive for us so clearly sa Romans 8 nung sinabi na, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind, for to set the mind on the flesh is death. But to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to the God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. They cannot please God. Kasi nga, there's this constant battle that goes on between the flesh and the spirit in the hearts of men. At ito pansin ninyo. Kasi how many of you here agree that this struggle wasn't really there until you came to know Christ? Wala to nun. Di ba? Before we became Christians, there, there, there was no struggle. We, we just do whatever we want. There's nobody to tell you na, huy, mali na yung ginagawa mo. Nobody. And it's the same with this story. no? Kasi tingnan nyo, bago dumating si Isaac, Ishmael did not cause any trouble in the house. Di ba? Sa kanyang bahay eh. He had the whole house to himself. Okay, he can do whatever he wants without any conflict at all. But the moment that the promise became a reality in the lives, in, in our lives, the moment that we become born again, then the battle begins. Because we don't just have a new walk with God, but we also have made a new enemy. An enemy who, who used to be a big part of our life. Which is, sino? The flesh. And the flesh, according to Paul, is always focused on what the flesh wants. But the spirit is only focused on what God wants. Kaya hindi mo silang pwede ipagsama. No? So ano yung solusyon? Guys, ano yung solusyon? Well, it's all going to come down to who do I allow to live in my house. Tama? At ano yung tamang sagot dyan? What does the scripture say? 
cast out the slave woman and her son. For the son of the slave woman shall not inherit with the son of the free woman. So even though by this time, Ishmael had already was, was already living in the house for, for I don't know what, uh, 17 years, uh, his stay was not to be permanent. No? Eventually, he has to be cast out with his mother. You see, they just, they just cannot coexist with Isaac and Sarah. Diba? Because the flesh and the law will have will first have to go in order for the, for the spirit and, and grace to persist. At ito dapat ang testimony ng bawat isang kristyano ngayon. No? That you cannot allow for the law and the flesh to coexist with the spirit and, and grace. Kasi hindi lang sa imposible yon masisira yung buhay mo kapag sinubukan mo siya. Okay, you have to get rid of them. At di, di lang sa ilalagay mo sila sa guest house, no? Na para pag, pag, pag na-miss mo sila, pwede mo sila pabalikin. No! You have to remove all of it. The whole nature of the flesh must be put to death. Listen to what Paul says here sa Colossians 3.5. Sabi niya, put to death therefore what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. I mean, just, just imagine the words that is being used here. Put to death. Hindi set aside. Put to death. Ganun siya ka-permanent. No? Tandaan niyo, when Hagar and Ishmael got cast out, they never came back. Diba? And this was the reason, no? Kasi Abraham tried to accommodate them for so many years, pero it did not work. Lalo lang gumulo yung buhay niya. And Paul is saying, we will find the same thing happen to us if we are still trying to make the flesh and the spirit coexist in our lives. Actually, yan mismo ang ginagawa ng mga Galatians ngayon, diba? They were trying to let the flesh back in. Gusto nilang ipagsama-sama lahat yan. The flesh, the spirit, law, grace. They want all of it to come together into one big happy family. Kahit para silang tubig at langis. Even if spiritually or even logically, they simply cannot mix. Kaya Paul is so frustrated with the teaching of these Judaizers. No? Kasi they were trying to marry all of these things together. At sabi niya, kung diyan ka tatayo, you're basically denying Christ. Sampal sa mukha na yan. Kasi everything Jesus did for you on the cross will be nullified. It will be worthless for you. So stop. Stop trying to make it work together. For we are not children of the slave woman, but of the free woman. Amen? And that's how Paul concluded his defense of the gospel dito sa Galatians, no? By telling us that if you are in Christ, if you are a Christian today, then you are an Isaac. Then you are a child of promise by grace through faith. And yes, yes, sometimes we still, we still do struggle with our old nature. The Hagars or and, and the Ishmaels of our lives, so to speak. See, they want to they want to persecute us. They want to, to bring us back into the bondage of slavery. At ano ulit yung kailangan natin gawin dyan, sabi ni Paul? Well, again, the key here is not to try to change them, no? Kasi we cannot change the old nature of the flesh. John 3.6 says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So kung ano siya, yan na yan. Kaya God did not even try to, to change or improve Hagar and Ishmael. Napansin niya ba yun? Kasi no amount of education or regulation can ever change the nature of the flesh. Kaya we cannot even try to, to compromise or accommodate it Kasi it will only lead to more slavery and conflict. 
Yeah, the only way to handle the flesh, the only way to handle the, the, the Hagar and the Ishmael's of our lives is to cast them out. It's to put them to death in a sense. Today, maraming marami sa atin dito, we are still trying to live with the flesh. Agree? We accommodate sin in our lives. And so we compromise. And we make room in our lives for the slave woman and her son. Yeah, Paul is reminding us so powerfully here at the end of chapter 4. Na tayo as Christiano. We are Isaacs. We are the children of promise. Born not of ordinary means, but born supernaturally. Born again by the power of the Spirit. So kung ikaw to, at naniniwala ka dito, then there's absolutely no reason not to believe what follows in this same paragraph. Di ba? Which is what? To cast out the slave woman and her son. To put to death whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Kasi instead of trying to day by day, week by week, trying to, to, to clear out uh, the cobwebs in your life and, and feeling guilty about it all the time, kasi parang lagi na lang bumabalik yung mga dumi sa buhay mo, then why not just kill the spider altogether? Di ba? Kill the spider once and for all, then there will be less cobwebs in your house. It's simple logic. Now, hindi ko sinasabi na it's not good to keep, to clip, keep cleaning your house all the time. Okay? Kailangan pa din natin gawin yan. God calls us to a life of repentance. So we need to do that all the time. Pero what is better than that is to put to, get all, to, to death all together what is of the flesh in you. As Paul puts it sa, dito sa Colossians. And let's end with this, no? Let's see what the rest of, of what Paul is saying dito sa paragraph na to. Sabi niya, put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Mm -hmm. On account of this, the wrath of God is coming. So Paul is saying na, dahil dito sa mga to, there's a day of judgment coming sa lahat sa atin. Okay? Kaya please, Please lang, don't discount this fact. Kasi yes, we do serve a God of love towards sinners. Pero also know that He is absolutely holy. So He has to be wrath, wrathful towards sin. Kaya na kailangan, kaya nga kailangan natin ng Savior. Di ba? Otherwise, bakit pa natin kailangang masave? Tapos tingnan niyo ano sabi na next. In this you too once walked when you were living in them. Meaning if you are in Christ today, if Jesus has already saved you, yes, yan yung buhay mo noon, pero hindi na dapat ngayon. Kaya you have to put them all away. Anger, malice, wrath, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have to put off the old self with his practices and have put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. In other words, you've got to get rid of the flesh and all the outworkings of it and put on the spirit. Kasi nga, yun nga, all of us, we, we used to live a life of sin because we're born that way. Totoo naman yun. We were all born of the flesh. Pero the good news is kung kristyano ka na ngayon, you are now born again by the Spirit. Born to a different mother. Kaya we are no longer slaves to these things anymore. We are no longer slaves to sin. But rather, we are now slaves to Christ and His righteousness. Amen? Guys, naniniwala ba kayo dyan? I mean, do you really, really believe that the, all of this with all your heart Kasi if you do, then Paul tells us this. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, 
free, but Christ is all and in all. Because we got a whole new identity now. And it has nothing to do with our race or gender, nothing to do with rituals or circumcised or not circumcised, nothing about social status, mayaman o mahirap, may pinag-aralan ba o wala. It's got nothing to do with any of that. Because it's all about our relationship with God through Christ Jesus. It all comes back to that. no? That Christ is all and in all. One last question pala before we end. So how do we get rid of the flesh? Di ba? Kasi sa totoo lang, ang dali lang sabihin. Tama? But in actuality, how do we really do it? How do we actually put to death the flesh in us if we are so weak? Well, Paul also gives us the answer here sa Romans 8, 12 to 14. Sabi na, so then, brothers, we are debtors. Meaning we have an obligation. Not to the flesh. To live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. So ano yung sagot? How do we win this battle? The only way to put to death the flesh is by the Spirit. At wala nang iba. It's all Spirit. Kasi you cannot fight flesh with flesh, di ba? Walang mangyayari dyan. Kaya the rest of the book of Galatians is going to talk about that. No? Tapos neto, we are, we are going to move away. We, we are going to move away from our struggles with the flesh and focus now on the spirit such as chapter 5 and 6. Kasi yan talaga yung sagot. No? It's not in, in, in doing better or trying harder. Kasi it will only lead you to self-effort in self-righteousness. So the answer is not in trying. The answer is trusting. Trusting in what? Trusting in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Guys, you and I, as Christians, we are not called to row our own boats. No? Alam niyo yun? When you use your power and your or and your own strength to row your boat from point A to point B, doing all these things, all this religious stuff, and following all these rules and regulations, trying to get to our destination. No. Di ka makakarating dyan. Because the answer really is not to try your best to row yourself to the destination. The answer to be is to be in a sailboat. In God's sailboat. Where you set yourself to the wind of the Spirit. And you allow the sanctifying work of the Spirit in our life to really be in control. Because then, and only then, can you truly, are you truly born free? Again, it's not in the trying, but it's in the trusting. It's when we acknowledge that we cannot do it and turn to the Holy Spirit alone who can bear the fruit of holiness in our lives. At yan yung susi sa lahat. No? The Holy Spirit is the key to our sanctification. The key for us uh, to live our lives to the Lord. E so kung ganun, ano naman yung role natin? Well, our role is to believe. Our role is to trust in every little bit of His Word. Na when He declares that I am no longer a slave to Satan, that I am no longer a slave to sin, that I belong to Jesus and His righteousness, that I am not a son of Hagar anymore, but a son of Sarah, that I am a child of promise, born again by the grace of God through the Holy Spirit, that all of it is true. At wala na akong ibang may isasagot other than just falling on my knees and praising Him and, and worshiping Him and, and loving Him. My God, my Savior, my Redeemer, 
my everything, my all in all. Amen? Let's pray. Father, what a, what a privilege it is to be able to study this wonderful passage tonight. Your word, Lord, is so, so good and so perfect that we wouldn't need or even want for anything more. But to just to just believe. To just believe na nung sinabi mo na dito na we, we who are in you by faith alone are the true sons of Sarah, born of the Spirit, born of the promise, and, and that we are no longer slaves to sin, slaves to the flesh, but slaves to you, Lord. That all of it is true. That all of it is true. As we leave this place and go on with the rest of our lives, I pray for those of us who are still trying to row our own boats, no? Those of us who are still struggling struggling to, to live out the Christian life. Napakawalan na namin yung mga sagwan namin. And just set up the sail to your Holy Spirit. And just trust in what you are doing in us. Speak to us, Lord, and help us especially, most especially, Lord, in times of our unbelief. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.